This is a tutorial on how to use Fraps. So the first thing you want to do is go to Fraps.com and click on download. This allows you to download a beta, or not a beta, a demo version, which only allows you to record for 30 seconds at a time. But if you find out that you like it, you can buy it for $37, at which point you own it for life. You never have to buy it again. And then you can download the full version in the members area. Once you do download the full version, you can open up Fraps, and this is what it's going to look like. So the first thing you need to do is click on the Movies tab, and then set your video capture hotkey to a key that won't mess up things in the game and is easy to remember. For me, F8 seems to be the best key because rarely do games actually use this, and it's, it's easy enough to get to and to remember. This is the key you will push to begin your recording in-game and that file will save into this folder. You can change it if you don't like where it's saving or you can click view that will open up the folder that the files are saved to. Now I'm going to demonstrate the recording before I get into the more technical parts of Fraps and I will do that with Bejeweled. So as you notice here up in the top right corner there are these numbers that are uh, moving around. Right now they're at a solid 60 FPS and these display your frames per second inside that game. If you don't like where those numbers are, you can click on the FPS tab and then you can come on over here to the overlay corner menu and you can click the corner that they're going to go to and as you see they switch corners. You can also hide the overlay entirely. Being able to change the overlay corner is useful if the numbers are in the way of an ammo gauge or some other information that you don't want them covering and you can also set a hotkey that will change this overlay for you in game but I have found that to be not very useful so I have it disabled. You can also update the overlay only once a second which will change the numbers from being a uh, from being completely spazzy to a lot less spazzy but I find once a second a little bit more annoying than just updating instantly and now let's demonstrate the recording. So as I said, the hotkey here is the button you will push to start recording. And as I push F8, they turn red. So I am now recording my uh, video. I can go here, click on stuff, play if I wanted to. When I'm done recording, I can just push F8 once again. They turn back to yellow and I'm done recording. So then I can click view and there is my file. Now I'm going to delete this to, dis to try to explain the loop buffer as best I can. Now say you're playing Counter-Strike and you do a beautiful headshot but oh man you weren't recording the last five hours that day you had you had been playing so Loop Buffer allows you to record the last 30 seconds of your game without actually recording five hours straight so I'm going to just push and hold the F8 here and these uh, these numbers will change to a kind of a purplish pinkish color I don't know exactly I'm kind of colorblind but now every 30 seconds behind me is being captured, but it's not saving it to my hard drive. It will save it to my hard drive once I push F8 again. So I'm going to push F8, the numbers turn red, and I'm going to record for, say, three more seconds. And I'm going to push F8 once more. Then I'm going to click View, and you'll see here I have a 25 second video despite recording for only about five actual seconds. That's because I recorded the 5 seconds after I pushed F8 and the 20 seconds before I pushed F8. That time limit is this number right here. You can set this to 60 seconds so it will record the last 60 seconds behind you. Or if it's lagging too much you can set it to 15 seconds and that will put a little bit less strain on your system. So once more, say you know you play Counter-Strike for 4 hours a day but you don't want to record Fraps for 4 hours a day just have this running and then every 30 seconds ago all you have to do is push F8 and you'll get uh, the last 30 seconds recorded. Now that's the basics with recording for uh, with Fraps so I'm going to go into the more technical options you can change in Fraps to try to get better quality or maybe improve uh, possible lag that you will that you will be getting while playing because Fraps will put some strain on your system. You will need a pretty beefy computer if you want to record and play games at the same time. So let's go down the tabs in a little bit greater detail. On the general tab you can decide whether or not to start Fraps Minimized. You can set the window to always be on top. This just means anything uh, and if you have another window open then Fraps will always be on top of it. You can run Fraps with Windows Start. You can minimize it to the system tray. 
Monitor Aero Desktop works on Windows Vista and 7. I haven't been able to get it to work on 8 or Windows 10. This allows you to record your desktop with Fraps, uh, but I would probably recommend using Open Broadcast if you want to record your desktop. For the FPS tab, I kind of went into this already, but this allows you to change your FPS overlay in-game. And there's also benchmarking options. Now benchmarking is a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but if you know what it is, then this allows you to change your benchmarking settings. If you don't know what it is, go find another video that describes it because I'm not going to do it right now. On the movies tab, like I said, you can change the folder where your file will save. You change your video capture hotkey. You can change the frames per second the fraps will record in. YouTube now allows 60 FPS, so that's probably the most that most people uploading to YouTube will want to go to. But if you're playing a game like Batman Arkham Knight that is stuck in 1990 and is stuck at 30 FPS, actually I think Diablo 2 got more FPS than Arkham Knight, anyway, uh, then you can set it to 30 FPS if you know for a fact you're not going to get any more than that. And you can also set your own custom FPS. This allows you to go up to 120, 240, I think something like 240 is probably the limit but you can just do what you want here half size and full size are options given to you if say fraps is lagging too much you can set it to half size and that will degrade the file but it will make your computer run a lot better inside that game for split movie every four gigabytes this is usually checked by default make sure you uncheck it because if you record for 10 minutes your Fraps file is going to be way bigger than 4 gigabytes, and you're going to wind up with 5 files that are 4 gigabytes big. Now the reason this used to be an issue was back in older days, hard drives would use a FAT32 file system, and that only allowed for 4 gigabyte file sizes max, so the, the Fraps would have to split it up so it could actually keep recording and deal with that limit. But these days, pretty much all modern computers use something like XFAT, or NTFS which don't have a 4 gigabyte file limit so you can go way 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 bigger and it's going to be so large you're probably not going to reach it even with fraps recording so there's no reason to have this checked. For the sound capture settings this is where stuff can get a little bit tricky if you notice that you're not recording audio inside your game number one you want to make sure it's not a common behavior for the game for example Batman Arkham City for me no matter what I did would not record sound but for other games, most of the time it's probably your sound card's issue. So when you check uh, record Windows 7 sound, this will record the default audio device that Windows has set. So to find that audio device, you want to come down to the horn here in the bottom right, right click on it, and then click on playback devices. This should work for Windows Vista 7, 8, and 10, and of course 8.1. Now under the playback tab, Whichever device has the check mark next to it is your default device. You may have a lot of devices here, you may only have one. But I'm going to show my disabled devices. As you see, I have a bunch of devices here I've disabled because I only want programs to use this speaker, uh, these, uh, th this particular sound card because that's where all my sound goes out of. It's possible Fraps might accidentally default something like digital audio SP diff uh, to default and nothing's coming out of that so I'd get no audio. So if you notice that you're not recording any audio just check here make sure that your sound card is your default device and you should be good to go. Uh, you can just if you want to disable a device you can just right click to disable it. You can right click a device to set it to default and you can also right click to show disabled devices if you want to see other ones maybe you accidentally disabled. Now for recording external input this is the exact same thing. Here you see I have two options, stereo mix and my microphone. Well I want perhaps to pick up my microphone which is my Yeti so under the recording tab I'm going to make sure my Yeti is checkmarked which is my default device. However, I don't actually recommend using Fraps to record your microphone. The reason for that is because you don't get a whole lot of control over the audio levels of your game audio and your microphone audio when you use Fraps. Fraps just kind of mushes it together and whatever you get, that's what you get. I will have a separate video on the way I believe is better to record in-game audio and your microphone at the same time, but if you really want to, you can use Fraps, you can test it out, see if it works for you. And you're also given the option to capture while pushing a certain button like space. Down here you can hide the mouse cursor in the video, locked frame rate, force lossless, I think I already brushed over that. 
For the screenshot tab, this allows you to take screenshots in-game, and this is pretty much the same thing as movies. You set a hotkey, and it will save a screenshot to this folder. You have four different format options you can choose here. BMP arguably has one of the higher qualities, but also has the largest image files. Generally, you're fine on JPEG or PNG. You can also include the frame rate on your screenshots, and you can repeat your capture every 10 seconds. Now, to answer something I've been asked before, no, your FPS counter does not show up in video. So when I start recording with this, that will not show up in video. That is hidden, so you don't have to worry about that. And that is basically it for how to use Fraps. There are other recording options available if Fraps doesn't work for you or if you don't like it. Bandicam is one a lot of people swear by. They, they like, There's a lot of Fraps bashing out there in the world, but I've never had problems with Fraps. But a lot of people like Bandicam, this one you do have to pay for. Open Broadcaster is another free option. This one has been gaining a lot of traction recently. It allows you to record and stream. Uh, and a lot of people like this one because the file sizes are significantly smaller than Fraps. If you have an NVIDIA GTX 600 series or newer graphics card, you can use NVIDIA Shadowplay. You'll want to download the free NVIDIA GeForce Experience software, then you'll want to click on My Rig, and then click on the Shadowplay tab. This will let you know if you are Shadowplay ready. If you are, if it's a check mark, then you can click Shadowplay. You can set the options here, and this has minimal recording impact because it's recording using your graphics card, and the file sizes are also significantly smaller, which means that you don't have to deal with huge file sizes with fraps, and once again, it's free. Now, like I said, Fraps has gi-freaking-gantic file sizes. I mean, this was 25 seconds, that's already 800 megabytes. So, if you are using Fraps, you'll want to do what a lot of people do and have a scratch disk. A scratch disk is where you're going to save all of your raw uh, videos and all of your raw recordings, and you're going to, with a plan to edit them later, render them down to a smaller file size, and then you delete those raw recordings and you just do it all over again. For mine, I have a 2 terabyte drive dedicated solely to recording, and I emptied it before this video, but I do fill this thing up a lot. So that's one option that you can do if you do want to use Fraps. Well, that is it for how to use Fraps. Thank you for watching this video.